Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Hope you enjoyed that interview with Tom Strobar of the Corporate Morality Action Center confronting the CEO of Starbucks and basically the CEO of Starbucks saying, hey, if you're a Christian, you believe in man, woman, marriage, we don't want you. We don't want your money. We don't want you buying our stock, sell your stock, go spend your money someplace else, take a hike. We are not interested in your kind of diversity. Again, just the absolute uh, total lie about this whole uh, diversity business. They are not about diversity in any way, shape, or form. Now, I want to play a couple of sound bites here on the whole issue of same-sex marriage, and we'll take some phone calls on this topic, 888-589-8840, as the Supreme Court gets ready to take this Take this case. Let's grab. Uh, start with clip two. Uh, Rob and Nicole Wallace uh, clips. Now, Nicole Wallace, this is what you're seeing here. Is this this mass abdication on the part of the Republican Party? You even got the executive director of the Ohio Republican Party was hired by the Republican Party leadership in the state of Ohio. The guy that they hired to be the executive director of the Republican Party in the state of Ohio is an activist for same-sex marriage. And he's now running, directing the day-to-day affairs of the Ohio Republican Party. It's mind-boggling to me. That's no different than the Republican Party of 1856 selecting a slave owner to be the executive director of the Republican Party. It's no different. Because the Republican Party, its platform, what it stands for, what it has always stood for, is man-woman marriage. In fact, the Republican Party was founded to fight those twin relics of barbarism. That was their phrase, not mine. Republican Party of 1854 it was founded to fight the twin relics of barbarism, slavery, and polygamy. They were on the march against the Mormon church. Mormon Church wanted to introduce polygamy into the United States, and the Republican Party rose up, started to fight the barbaric relic of polygamy. So the Republican Party from day one was about containing the institution of slavery and about protecting the institution of marriage. This has always been the charter of the Republican Party since day one, since it was founded. It was founded in part to protect and defend the institution of marriage of natural marriage. So that's why it's just absolutely bizarre when you've got these people in the state of Ohio that are actually hiring somebody and paying somebody who is a crusader for sodomy-based marriage to provide leadership to head up their party. Unfortunately, there are a lot of conservatives in Ohio that are taking exception uh, to this and raising their voices in protest. Now, this is Nicole Wallace. Now, I, I want to make sure you know she's a Republican strategist. She had a position with the Bush administration, George Bush, the younger. So she's got Republican Party uh, credentials. She's not a Democrat. She may be a liberal, but she's not a Democrat. So she is here. She's on this panel discussion as a member of the Republican Party. And, and part of why I want to play these sound bites for you is for you to realize just how far from the moorings the establishment of the Republican Party has drifted. Now, what happens if you drift far enough from your moorings, you get far enough away and that rope breaks, you just sort of drift off into uh, oblivion. And that's where I see the establishment of the Republican Party where they want to take this party. They want to take this party off until it is lost at sea. You know, Carl Rove is out there saying, yeah, I can see a day coming when the candidate for the Republican Party presidential nomination will believe in gay marriage. Well, I will guarantee you that candidate would have no opportunity to win the presidency. If the Republican Party were to ever go for somebody like that. We virtually had that with Mitt Romney, frankly. I, I, I will be honest with you. I don't think Fr- uh, Mitt Romney had one single solitary objection morally to same-sex marriage. I mean, I just don't think he did. I think it was just all a political thing. 
That's why there was no energy. That's why there was no passion in it when he talked about social issues and the institution of marriage. He just didn't care about it. He, 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 he as a guy, he would have been just absolutely fine with same-sex marriage, and that's why people couldn't get energized about him as a conservative uh, a candidate. But the point here is that we need to understand the gravity of the situation as far as the Republican Party is concerned. I mean, people are talking about a third party and all this. I mean, this party, I believe, is about ready to just absolutely melt down and implode over the issue of same-sex marriage. So here is Nicole Wallace. She was on actually opposite Gary Bauer, who's a friend of ours and, uh, you know, rock-ribbed, rock-solid uh, conservative. But I was more interested in the words that Nicole Wallace has to speak as somebody who is representing herself as someone who's in leadership with the in the Republican Party. Here's clip number one. This is a conservative legal argument that they will be advancing. Mm-hmm. They will basically lay out the conservative mm-hmm. case that, that there is not any place in the Constitution that allows for a different set of rules for a different class of people. There's also a moral imperative here. If you believe, if you value and treasure and revere the institution of marriage, then you should want every family unit to be to be really wrapped in marriage. And, and if you believe that children mm-hmm. are best raised in families where both of their parents are married, then there is certainly no other answer than to, to overturn something like Prop 8, which would deny an entire class of people access to this revered institution. Now- so this is an amazing thing to me. You've got this complete Jedi mind meld now where you've got Republicans out there claiming that same-sex marriage represents some kind of conservative position. And, of course, the reality is if you look at marriage, first thing you have to do before you talk about it as a revered institution and everybody how to have access to it and all that you got to ask yourself the question, what is marriage? Let's define it first. And by definition, by God's definition, according to the laws of nature and nature's God, marriage is the union of one man and one woman, period. That's what God said in Genesis 2. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Jesus reiterates that in Matthew 19. So you have to understand that by according to the laws of nature and nature's God, marriage is the union of one man and one woman. It's not the union of two men or two women. Now, if you ignore that, I mean, that is a huge reality. And the the reality here is that marriage must always be connected to the act of procreation, not that every Sexual union between husband and wife results in procreation. You know, it doesn't. You know, married couples are going to have a handful of children, and they come together for sexual intimacy way more than that. So it's not like every act of procreation has got to lead to a child or that procreation is the only reason for marriage. It's not. Part of the reason is for sexual pleasure, for sexual enjoyment, for sexual intimacy, and, and a relationship that is sanctified by an entire culture as a place where you can enjoy sexual intimacy with no guilt, where you have the approval and, and the commendation of all of society. That's part of what marriage is for. And that can only happen between a husband and a wife in marriage. If you look at the kind of sexual activity that takes place between two people of the same sex, you know, whatever else you know, you know that neither evolution nor God designed the human body for that purpose. Didn't design it for that sexual purpose. It is being put to uses that are contrary to its design, that are unnatural and are contrary to nature. That's why Paul says in Romans chapter 1, the kind of sexual activity there is unnatural. It is contrary to nature. To nature, So it's just bizarre to hear these people redefine marriage uh, and, and then talk about it as if it were a conservative uh, position to take to uh, defend this institution. And, and, of course, the Constitution itself is silent about marriage. You can read the Constitution from the first word to the last, and you won't find the word marriage in there anywhere. And that's critically important to understand. If you're going to talk about a constitutional right, the minimum thing you ought to expect is that it ought to be in the Constitution somewhere. It's not. 
The right to keep and bear arms, that's in the Constitution. The right to a trial by jury, that's in the Constitution. The right to freedom of speech, that's in the Constitution. The right to marry, not in the Constitution. It's not even touched there. It's not properly a constitutional issue. So if it's not in the Constitution, what does the Constitution say it's left for? It is left for the states or for the people, according to the Tenth Amendment. So properly speaking, this is no business of the federal government uh, other than when it is going to hire people and pay them and give them spousal benefits, then the federal government, of course, it's got a right to decide who's eligible for spousal benefits. If you're going to hire people, you're going to give them health insurance and you're going to make health insurance available to them, their spouses and their families, then you obviously have got to define who's a spouse for the purpose of federal benefits, who qualifies as what qualifies as a family for the purpose of federal benefits. You got to do the same thing when it comes to rules for the military. You got the federal government, of course, has the right to decide what marriage is for federal purposes. But the federal government's got no uh, right to impose an understanding or a definition of marriage on all 50 states. It's just not there. That's up for the states to decide for themselves. The only way it would be appropriate for the federal government to establish uniform marriage policy is if we had a federal marriage amendment. And that would be a state's rights issue because then the states would be deciding whether they wanted to amend the Constitution. You can't amend the Constitution unless you can get 37 states to vote for your amendment to the federal Constitution. And then its meaning changes, but it's changed because the states have decided they want to change their governing document. Other than that, the federal government has no right to impose itself in this case. And this is exactly what the Supreme Court is getting ready to do to tell all 50 states what their marriage policy has to be. It's blatantly unconstitutional, really, regardless of which way the decision goes. Focal Point AFR Talk, back in two.